chocolate, <clears throat> guns, uh, yodeling. I think these are the three things that I know about Switzerland. <laughs> So we're reacting to their geography now today. I'm excited. Um, if you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Come see me on Twitch. And let's keep learning about the world. All right. Let's do this. Thanks for being here. <laughs> All right. We have now reached Switzerland. Alps, cheese, neutrality, banks. Alps, well, Switzerland didn't start too. off that way. It was basically a bunch of mountain folk that built an entire economy off of what are essentially European ninjas. And now if shit goes down, they have a bunch of bunkers they can hide in in case of nuclear war happens. But we'll get Ooh. into that later. In the meantime, here's the intro song. It's time, it's time to, to learn, learn geography, geography now. now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. Get your Geography Now merch at geographynow.com. This is only a year brand. ago, so case, they have merch. Switzerland, the crossroads of the Germanic and Latin worlds. Known as the Confederation Helvetica, despite not actually being a confederation. Named CH. When I found out that CH stands for Switzerland, I was like, for what now? <laughs> I was, okay, That that's why. What worlds. is this? Known as the Confederation Helvetica. Confederation Helvetica. That is why. Okay, I was so confused. I'm like, why would the... And someone was saying, oh, it's because S and W were taken. And I'm like, they couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> Neither of these letters are in Switzerland. That just cracked me up. So thank you. That makes so much more sense now. Helvetica, despite not actually being a confederation, named after the <laughs> Helveti tribe, which were actually Celtic. Hmm. We should hang out sometime. That were mostly wiped out and driven away by the Latins and Germanic peoples. Oh, well, no, okay. okay. <laughs> but anywho, so I actually promised my Swiss friend Herman that he could be in this episode with me. And I wanted to fly him out here to Los Angeles to co-host. Unfortunately, at the time of filming this episode, the US had restrictions on Europeans entering our country and the actual date of acceptance for Europeans to enter would take way too long. So I decided mm. if I can't fly him out here, why don't I just fly out there and make a makeshift Geography Now studio set and have him in the episode. Here I go. <laughs> that was that because of COVID? I bet it was. Oh, rough stuff. Oh, made it. And guys, say hi <laughs> to Mr. Herman. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Yeah, Switzerland. Yeah. Again, I'm super <laughs> short, so I got to step on a box. What does it mean to you, Herman, to be Swiss? <laughs> There's, of course, the whole cheese and chocolate thing. For me, to be honest, we are quite grateful that uh, we live in this nice country, which is just... I also know that it is absolutely beautiful. Just from pictures I've seen, I want to just ride a train through Switzerland. I hear that I might have to get an S... E-S-T-I-A or something like that to be able to even just cross the border into Switzerland. I'm not exactly sure. And then I've heard that maybe I don't need that anyway. But I would love to just see Switzerland's, um, just the beauty of it. It's the safe, stable, and it has been like this for a long time. By the way, guys, uh, this is the guy that was in my heritage trip video. Uh, this is my Swiss go-to guy. You're an expert on Switzerland, Very right? Cool. You sure. Are. All right, and with that, let's move <laughs> on. Let's find Switzerland on the map, shall we? He's like, sure, I guess. <laughs> So Switzerland is kind of a unique place in Europe, mostly because of the way how it was formed. You see, most countries had a king, but Switzerland didn't. It was just a bunch of annoyed mountain folk who didn't want to align with any king and became independent. Now, there's a lot of disagreement on exactly how Switzerland was formed. Some people say maybe it was the medieval times. Some people say it was the more modern Napoleonic Wars. So technically, the earliest form of Switzerland was after the Rütlich War. Uri Schwyz and Unterwalden agreed to have an alliance. It was basically like, hey, Schwyz! How's it going? Hey man, this army just came in and attacked me for no reason. Oh, the way me too! Are we That's talking about said, the right? armies coming through without our permission? Yes! Oh, oh my god, so, so annoying. annoying! You know what we should do? We should form a, um... A confederation. A confederation. A confederation. A confederation. Let's do it. Like, let's form a confederation. Yeah. Together. Like, let's do then it. Then later it was <laughs> like, hey, can, can we join, please? Can I join There's too? Like, just like... I don't speak the language, but we'd like to join. This gives me an idea. Maybe I should expand. The point is, Switzerland okay. started to grow. And today you have the Switzerland you see before you locked away safely in the Alps. Let's go to the map now, shall we? <laughs> First of all, Switzerland is a landlocked nation located at the convergence point of Western, Central, and Southern Europe, surrounded by five countries. Remember, don't forget little Liechtenstein. The country yeah. is a federal <laughs> republic made up of 26 cantons, each with their own unique flag and coat of arms. However, keep in mind, six of these cantons are considered traditional half cantons, cantons which means they are grouped into three pairs that share a councillor in their government. In order to maintain 
maintain a somewhat decentralized government system that keeps cantons happy, technically Switzerland has no official capital, as stated by their constitution, but Bern is considered the de facto capital, as it holds the House of Parliament and other Whoa. federal authorities. The country's largest city, though, would be Zurich. I never knew that Switzerland didn't have an official capital. That's very fascinating. What other countries don't have a capital? I don't think I just ever thought about that before. I just figured every country had a capital. Oh, that's very interesting. <laughs> I love it. But Bern is uh, something, I guess. Zurich, located in the northeastern part of the country. It also hosts the largest and busiest airport, Zurich International. Like and from really there, quiet. the next largest cities are Geneva and Basel, which also carry respectively the second and third busiest airports as well. In fact, about 75% of the population actually lives in the North Swiss Plateau, even though it only makes up about 30% of the land surface. Makes sense, Speaking of which, the only ambiguous dispute they have is with Germany and Austria over the Bodensee, or Lake Constance. The three countries have never formally established border. borders, and they kind of just don't say anything. In any huh. case, Switzerland also has some other unique border anomalies. For one, by Schaffhausen, Switzerland tried to grab as much land as they could north of the Rhine River, leaving a unique layout of territory grabs that jut into Germany, <laughs> and it even leaves <laughs> one exclave of Germany entirely within Switzerland, Bussingen am Hochrhein. Head down south to the Ticino Canton, and you yeah. have the Campione d'Italia, which is basically one big casino resort. It is an exclave of Italy completely engulfed within Switzerland, only about a half mile or less than one kilometer over a hill away from Italy. Finally, if you go up to Basel, you have some very weird skinny land salients that jut into France for no logical reason, like this one by the town of oh. Riti, which at its narrowest choke point is less than 230 feet or 70 meters wide. Transport in Switzerland <laughs> is top notch over. though. Well paved highways, tunnels, and train networks connect every region of Switzerland. The biggest and most proud engineering project that the country has ever gone through though would probably be the Gotthard Base Tunnel. It is the longest rail tunnel and deepest traffic tunnel oh in the gosh. world, effectively cutting through the Alps, wow. connecting the canton of Uri with Ticino. This tunnel has heavily bolstered the efficiency of Switzerland's freight and passenger transport, as about 11,000 people and about 70,000 tons of cargo are able to swiftly pass by daily. Fun fact, because of Hermann, me and my incredible. mom actually got to go see Liechtenstein. He drove us all the way from Zurich, all the way through Liechtenstein in Austria, and we ended up in Lindau, Germany, where we met the worst waiter ever at a casino restaurant. <laughs> I remember, this guy was horrible. In Switzerland, public transport is really good. You can get almost any anywhere by train. That's the Jungfrau Jochbahn, which brings you above 3,500 meters. But that's kind of like more of a touristy thing, right? Yeah, like, that's yeah. a tour. I've never yeah. been there. Speaking of trains, you wow. said something about like they donate the old ones, right? Yeah, actually trams. The trams of Zurich are going to Ukraine and the trams from Basel are going to um, Belgrade. The interesting thing is interesting. that historically, some places that are actually outside of modern day Switzerland used to be protectorates or associates of Switzerland. They are Mulhaus, which lies in today's France, Rottweil in Germany, Valtellina and Bormio, which today lie in Italy. Even though the Austrian state of Vorarlberg once voted to become part of Switzerland in World War One, we decided to better not take them in. You rejected them! <laughs> now, another thing about Switzerland you have to understand is that they kind of have like two imaginary lines based off of the cultural regions. You can explain. What are they, Hermann? Well, there's the Röstigraben separating the French-speaking part of Switzerland from the German, and then there's the Polentagraben, which is between the German part and the South, which speaks Italian. Basically, one side drinks beer, the other wine. Due to their history of constantly being invaded <laughs> or outside forces threatening or just generally bothering them, the Swiss have developed a culture of, let's just kind of call it, heavy defensive caution. We are neutral, but we still uh, are prepared to defend ourselves to make it as expensive as possible for anybody to attack us. This is why, <laughs> should the event ever occur, Smart, the country is loaded with copious amounts of bunkers everywhere. Like, it's actually a law all living units have to have a bunker or something like yeah. that, right? Yeah. <gasps> we have a lot of hidden really? um, bunkers and if you go hiking you will just see them, but they're nowhere on the map. There's no exact number on how many are built, but apparently they can protect the entire population plus more, right? I think. You know, the question is for how long, right? In any case, Switzerland uh, yeah. has so many no Notable cool sites to see and visit. That is really interesting. So there's a law that requires, is it like in a, an entire apartment building, they at least have to have one bunker? Does every house have to have a bunker? And then what are the regulations for it? Like if you're a house builder or if you're out there and you're like, I want to build a house, you have to build a bunker to go along with it? That is so... Anyway, I want to know more about that. If anybody has any more info for me about that, please put it in the comments. That is so fascinating to me. I've never heard of it being kind of like a law type of thing.
Very fascinating. Is it? We actually filmed this part before I could audition anybody to do it, so uh, I'll just uh, fill this in with a voice dubbed voiceover. Here's Alex. Hey guys, <laughs> I'm Alex. I'm from Geneva, Switzerland, although I'm currently That's in awesome. Mexico. Here's a few things you should absolutely check out if you haven't made it to Switzerland. Check out the Gedo Fountain, the Cathedral Saint Pierre, uh, Palais des Nations, which is home of the United Nations, and the Sun wow. Hydroglyden Castles. Check out the Chateau de Chillon, the Oberhofen uh, Valley and Tourbillon, uh, Chateau de Gruyere, uh, Bunhauser, which is basically. I wonder how many of those castles have been in movies. I feel like they are so aesthetically pleasing. That is really awesome. The capital, check out the bear park, uh, Kinderfressenbrunnen statue, Lauterbrunnen that has over 70 waterfalls. Uh, the Lake Lucerne has the Lion Monument oh, and the wow. Jungle Bridge. With, uh, yeah, 347 ski resorts covering a distance of four and a half thousand miles. That so makes Matt, sense. Sass face, summaries, and my personal favorite, Verbier. For more Mediterranean feels, check out the Old Town Piazzas uh, and beautiful lakeside views of Lugano. Down oh. in the south of Switzerland. Switzerland also has a bunch of museums and amusement parks. So for that, check out uh, Aqua Park, Conyland, Swiss Vapor Park, and the Geiger Museum, which is absolutely amazing. And why did that look like scorn? Did you guys uh, ever Park, play Conyland, that game? Swiss Vapor Park and the. It looks like a building made out of bones. Like that looks like a spine. That is, what the heck is this about? This is very fascinating. Okay, anyway. Geiger <laughs> Museum, which is absolutely amazing. And if you're looking for an adrenaline rush, check out the mountain coasters, also a toboggan, oh as well gosh. as the Stuchbahn Funicular, which is the stu uh, steepest funicular in the world. But yeah, thank so you so much. Cool. Have a great day. Thank great you, job. Alex. You're Alex. always going. <laughs> Alex. Okay, so when they said Bear Park, it reminded me of in Idaho, USA, there is a place called Bear World. And it is a place where you can, it's basically like a, a big, you know, gated off park or something. You can drive your car through it. And there are just bears around and different wildlife. And we, we went there one time and we saw a bear try and get into the bed of someone's truck. And we were like, they're going to be stuck out here. Like, what are they going to do? Eventually the bear got back down. But we, were, we just thought this was the funniest thing. We're like, how is this legal? How can you just drive your car where they're just bears <laughs> that can just attack your car. Anyway, so funny. I wonder how similar Bear Park is. Can you drive your car through it? Or are we just crazy like that? <laughs> underground for whatever reason. Yeah, if you have a mountain in between two places, what are you gonna do? Which is actually the perfect transition into the next segment. The... <laughs> Now, of course, you cannot talk about Switzerland without talking about the mountains and nature. Literally, the moment you say Switzerland, obviously images of like snow-capped mountains and valleys and cows with cowbells. <gasps> Even the iconic Matterhorn Cute. probably comes up, although 12 oh, people yeah. usually die on it, but yeah. <laughs> Should I say, oh, did they name it after Disneyland's Matterhorn? And see how many people get mad at me for that? <laughs> Just kidding. I, I, but I, I am familiar with the Matterhorn because of Disneyland. But I mean, this is the real one, the original, obviously, but so funny. It's still very beautiful. It's a challenge. <laughs> so let's go to the map and break down Switzerland's land makeup. Now, despite Switzerland being famous for the Alps and being the most mountainous country in Europe, the actual Alps only make up about 60% of the country. The remainder of the country is made up of two other geographic zones, the Swiss or Central Plateau, which is the lowest part of the country and where most of the agriculture and livestock raising is concentrated, and the Jura Mountains in the Northwest on the border with France. Gosh, of course, so in the Alps, you can find, shocker, the tallest peak, Dufourspitze, just on the border with Italy. No, the famous incredibly difficult wow. to climb Matterhorn just a few miles away is not the tallest peak. It just <laughs> looks really cool. That's all. Just to skip away, you find the Alec Glacier, the largest glacier in the Alps, and it is a UNESCO heritage site. From the ice melt of the Alps, of course, you get the source of all the rivers that feed Switzerland, including the longest river, the Rhine, which shares borders with its neighbors. However, wow. the longest river fully in Switzerland, not shared, would be the Are or Aar River. Of course, these rivers also feed into the world-renowned lakes of Switzerland, the largest one being Lake Geneva or Lac Le Mans, in which Switzerland was like very set on making sure they hooked around the end with Geneva and got most of it when splitting it with France. Nonetheless, the largest lake fully in Switzerland is Neuchâtel, not to be confused with Neuchâtel in Normandy, France, which is where the soft cheese comes from. Oh. Yeah, and those highlights don't even cover a okay. fraction yeah. of all the cool nature stuff in, in Switzerland. You can oh, so hike, awesome. then at the end you arrive at the lake and it's perfect. 
Is it like fresh enough for you to drink from or no? You could maybe, but guy might have peed in it five minutes ago. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. Well, Very Switzerland true. sure is beautiful, <laughs> but when it comes to natural resources, we're actually not so rich. We don't really have any. Much of our economy oh. is actually based on industry and services. To explain a little bit more about the economy and industrial output, here's Noah to explain. <laughs> Okay. All right, let's get to it. So we all know high-end things like luxury Swiss watches and Swiss knives are made in Switzerland, which are, by the way, a multi-billion dollar industry. By the way, if you're looking for a backpack, Swiss gear is amazing. I've had one of those backpacks for probably over a decade. Great stuff. Good backpacks, man. But the one industry Not that sponsored, everyone sure. takes focus on, even though it only makes up about 15% of their economy, is the Swiss banking system. Home to two mm. world-renowned companies, UBS and Credit Suisse. Credit Suisse being founded mm. by Alfred Escher. Look him up. The appeal is that Swiss banks offer an insane <laughs> amount of privacy and confidentiality. To explain more about the bank situation, here's Swiss geography Simon. Good team, it's an aunt. Hello, I am uh, Simon and I'm actually from Switzerland. What part of Switzerland? Bodensee. Wow! See, back in 1713, <laughs> uh, Switzerland's Great Council decided they would outlaw the uh, financial disclosure to uh, Europe's financial elites. In addition, all forms of bribery were pretty much criminalized. Since 1934, oh. it was uh, made. Wouldn't that be nice? We don't do that! <laughs> that, is, that is everywhere here. Fascinating. I also love the difference between this guy's um, accent and the, the first guy. Like, you can tell that they are definitely from different parts of Switzerland. I'm kind of proud of myself when I recognize differences, even though I wouldn't be able, I, I can't even remember where the first guy is from in Switzerland, but, or if they even mentioned it. But yeah, I noticed that his is really strong, I feel, compared to the other one. The other ones, I, th I thought it was really nice, but anyway, just a an observation. It's criminal to disclose the identity of any account holders, as long as they didn't have any extreme felony charges. Even though the interest rates are really low, sometimes the rate is even negative, which means you have to pay to hold Swiss francs or to open an account. Nonetheless, our rate of investments are pretty high, like at 2.5%, due to the regular stability of the Swiss economy. Granted, there was some controversy, as there have been many lawsuits uh, brought against our beautiful banks, such as the 1996 Holocaust victim class action lawsuit, which claimed that Swiss banks knowingly concealed assets illegally acquired by the Nazis. Then again, in 2009, uh, the US what? strong armed Switzerland into, you know, uh, disclosing uh, wealthy assets from 50,000 Americans. It worked, but now, you know, Swiss banks don't accept any Americans or even Swiss people who move to America or who make a vacation in Florida. If you'd like to open an account, just contact me on Instagram and it will be totally confidential. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Adieu, mit den Hand. Thanks, Simon. <laughs> yeah, with great banks comes okay. great liabilities. But of course, uh -huh. Switzerland is more than just banks. They have thriving pharmaceutical, tech, and tourism sectors. The palate is getting dry. Is that a Swiss bottle too? That'd be pretty cool if it was. They take their agriculture industry very seriously. The government actually subsidizes 70% of farms. I mean, how can you say no to the wonderful dairy provided by Swiss cows? To explain more about the animal situation, here is Gary Harlow. Hey guys, uh, Caleb's actually busy. He couldn't do this segment, but uh, we got Ian. Was that the potato for, for Denmark? Is that what that was? <laughs> Shh, okay. So uh, you're gonna be Gary Harlow today. You're probably gonna mess it up, but I don't care. Yay. I'm gonna screw up for sure. Switzerland, being the alpine <laughs> nation it is, provides quite the habitat for all kinds of strange species. The country has 18 official nature oh, parks. Dear. Now in these mountains, you have quite a many of mountain adapted undulates. <laughs> Much noted are the ibex and the chamois. Thanks to their two toed hooves, these little guys latch on to the narrowest of walls. Oh, and this makes climbers. you think, are they brave or are they just stupid? I ask myself that a lot. Unfortunately, <laughs> most of the predators like the gray wolf and the Eurasian lynx are incredibly rare. Brown bears were actually hunted to extinction in 1904. Now one species wow. of predator that does thrive in Switzerland is the European asp. It's a viper and it's well adapted to the high altitudes. Now the bite's extremely painful. Now unlike most countries, Switzerland doesn't have a national animal. But if you ask around, you might find out that the Because unofficial... they don't, they don't even have a capital. So why would they have a national animal? That is still blowing my mind. Swiss animal is the iconic Swiss cow. You can no, they're cow. not naturally from these here mountains. All right, well, that's it for me, fellas. This is terrible. I'm sorry, Hannah, I'm sorry. Is... Thanks, Ian. That's uh... how I feel. I'm like, all right, moving on. <laughs> thank you, thank you, random. Random Hannah, is that her name? 
Anyway, we've discussed <laughs> much of the industry, economy, and physical makeup. That means there's only one more part left. Food! Now, I love doing this part, but I will gracefully step down and let an actual Swiss geography take over. Hello, we are Mara and Terence, and today we are going to talk about Swiss food. We have to talk about cheese, of course. Thousands of, course. of varieties of them. You probably also know the popular dishes, fondue and raclette. Uh, Rösti, fondue! I know that one! Oh, that's Swiss. Okay, good to know. That's freaking delicious stuff. <laughs> okay, when I said chocolates at the beginning, I meant cheese. That's what I meant. I've heard that the chocolates are very good though. So. It's like a hash brown, Alpenmagrone, Zürich Schnatzlitz, Bernerplatte, Pave Vaudois, Malokov de Winzel. Birchenmüsli. And desserts. Bosne Lackerli, Bündner Nusstorte, Zuckerkehlstorte. Vermicel. And of course, uh, what? chocolate. Yeah, yes, thank although you. Although we don't have cocoa trees here. <laughs> we also invented absinthe. Which is a super strong oh, alcohol, can give you hallucinations. Then there is also another soft drink uh, called Rivella. And uh, finally, in every Swiss kitchen, mochi and automat. And like a mini automat uh, dösli in a <laughs> Swiss person's hiking backpack. That's it. What are they? I don't know what those were. Are they breadcrumbs? What, what did those... Is it maple syrup? Help me. What are those uh, those foods? <laughs> I can see them. And I gotta I gotta try some of those desserts you mentioned. All right. Yeah, and what? Barbs, it, back so to interesting. You. Thank you, Noah. Also, fun fact: because Switzerland is so expensive, we actually like to go shopping in other countries just because it's cheaper. There are some laws what you can bring back, like uh, one kilogram of meat, five liters of wine, or one liter of strong liquor, and one kilogram of butter. They actually check at the border when you drive through. Yes. But what? I mean, you guys do have good stuff. I mean, you you're well known for your cheese and chocolate. We put it on everything. You bake something in the oven, put some cheese on it. You're having sushi, wow. why not put some rocklet? Yeah, food always brings people together. Wait, did did he say put 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 what on the sushi? Put in the oven, put some cheese on it. You're having sushi, why not put some rocklet? Yeah. Some what 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 what? Is that a type of cheese rock rocklet? He didn't say chocolate, did he? <laughs> I'm so confused. Also, I just realized that this video is 33 minutes long. This is gonna be a longer one than I thought. Food always <laughs> brings people together. Except for that one time in Lindau with that f***ing waiter, I swear. Seriously, dude. Four years later and you're still traumatized. Yes, I'm still pissed off. Anyway, let's move on. <coughs> Excuse me. Switzerland, as we already explained, has a lot of cantons. Cantons. And there's actually kind of a word you guys have in Switzerland. Explain, Herman. It's Eidgenossenschaft. What does it mean? An oath alliance came along and formed okay. a nation. Except for Ticino, which we conquered. Despite the fact that each of the region kind of has their own canton cultural difference, at the end of the day, they are all Swiss. Here's how you break down the populace. First of all, the country has about 8.5 million people and often ranks in the top three global competitive markets and human development index scores on earth. Ethnically speaking, mm. things get a little complicated because Swiss censuses only take in data from factors like citizenship and place of birth. So the specific details can be a little vague, but in the broadest sense, it will say that about 75% of the country are Swiss nationals and the remaining 25% oh. are resident foreigners, one of the highest proportions oh. in the developed world. From here, things get a a little overlappy because within both groups everything breaks down linguistically as well often switzerland will refer to their linguistic groups for data rather than ethnic in which case about 63 okay. percent of the country are primarily german speaking swiss 23 percent are primarily french speaking and somewhere around eight to nine percent are primarily italian speaking finally less than one percent are romance speaking keep in mind this data can apply to anyone from anywhere that claims these languages as <coughs> um Wait, uh, where were the Swiss speaking Swiss? Is this just the, the middle part? So all the rest of that is Swiss speaking? Wait, why did I miss? Switzerland will refer to their linguistic groups for data rather than ethnic, in which case about 63% of the country are primarily German speaking Swiss, 23% are primarily French speaking, oh. and somewhere around 8 to 9% are primarily Italian speaking. Finally, less than 1% are Romance speaking. Keep in mind this data can apply to anyone from anywhere that claims these languages as primaries, regardless of their ethnic background. What we do know though is that of the 25% foreign residents, about 64% of them are from the EU or EFTA countries, the largest being 
including Italians, followed by Germans and Portuguese and French. There's a sizable Kosovar Albanian community, and of the Asian community, Sri Lankans, mostly of Tamil descent, make up the largest demographic. The Swiss franc is our currency. I'm kind of confused. Is Swiss a language? Or is is it just a like a, an ethnicity? Is Swiss I'm looking this up because I'm a language. Uh, I there's Swiss German. What the Okay. I learned something new today. Somebody tell me if I have this wrong, but it sounds like Swiss is not a language. It's there's Swiss German, there's Swiss Swiss French, things like that. What the heck? Okay, anyway. <clears throat> See, and we drive Let's on the right going. side of the road. And you guys use the J plug outlet, which I hate because there's like an inward diamond shaped divot and my C plug adapters don't fit. Why do you, you guys are trying to do everything to be different from the rest of Europe. It's so weird. Well, sometimes you introduce a standard before the rest of Europe and then it's too late. In Switzerland, the dishwashers used to be 55 centimeters and then Europe introduced the new standard of 60 centimeters. But the problem is it costs more to manufacture in a special size. So our dishwashers cost three times as much. Yay. Any Anyway, wow. Switzerland has four official languages, Swiss German, Swiss French, Swiss Italian, and oh, see, Romansh, I... even though less than 1% of the- I could have just listened for another 30 seconds and they would have uh, answered my question. Anyway, this is why we just watch the videos. <laughs> <laughs> country speaks it, it's still an official language. It's actually pretty closely related to vulgar Latin, which was spoken in the Roman Empire, and uh, it's also a cousin of Romanian. So most of us know three languages somehow. What is the difference between That's Swiss so German cool. and Hochdeutsch spoken in Germany? So Swiss German is a, a very strong dialect. We have uh, dropped, for example, the simple past tense, and uh, the Germans don't really understand us. Don't even get started with French Swiss as well, although I do like how they use the nonante and uh, huitante and uh, septante, catvante and catvante. Like, yeah. oh, oh, and don't even get started what? with Ticino Italian. In, in fact, you know what? Mat Matteo can explain it. Here you go. This guy can explain. So Ticino Swiss sounds very much like uh, Northern uh, Lombardy. You can't tell if it's a uh, Swiss or not but just by the pronunciation. But the Swiss have some specific word that give them up. For example, they say Natel instead of mobile phone or they say lift instead of ascensore for saying lift. Except for this, it's just usual Northern Italian uh, speak. Anyway, regardless of the linguistic background, they are not French Swiss or German Swiss or Italian. They're all They're just, just Swiss, Swiss. For what's worth the though, language. there's so much backstory with Switzerland. For example, the Habsburg family, which ruled the Austrian Hungarian Empire for centuries, was from Habsburg in Argau, Switzerland. But they lost with their knights against the Swiss peasants in the Battle of Morgarten. See, this is kind of the interesting contrast to the otherwise neutral, peaceful image of Switzerland comes in. The brutal fighting skill of the Swiss was so well renowned throughout Europe that it actually kind of became like their biggest export. All the rulers in Europe uh, got Swiss mercenaries and in the end it might be a French king fighting an Italian army and in the end it's Swiss fighting Swiss. That's so weird. And then they yeah, actually decided huh. to stop having offensive war and introduce this neutrality. Nonetheless, you know, their neutrality has always been kind of pressured throughout the years and it's been kind of pushed. Uh, explain a little bit more, Herman. In neutrality, you also have to treat both sides of the war similar. For example, you could not trade with any of them, but we didn't do that because we didn't want to get invaded by Germany. So True. we traded with Germany, we traded some with the Allies. In the historic context of being surrounded by the Axis powers, well, yeah. you had to, to stay you, neutral. Yeah. You had to do what you had to do. How do you deal yeah. with all this pressure trying to be neutral when the whole world is not neutral and you're surrounded by everybody? It's a tough question. But for what it's worth, Switzerland has known that neutrality has always kind of come at a cost. And this is one of the reasons why Switzerland is a conscription country. You go to military after you're 19, once for half a year, and then every year, a couple of weeks, three or four, until you're 30 or 31. There's a disclaimer though. There are some exceptions. The Swiss military has some quotas of how many people they they want. If you have some health issues, you don't have to go to the military, but you will be paying 3% of your salary to the army. Mm -hmm. And if you have ethical reasons not to go, you can also apply. fill out a form, apply yeah. to not go to the military, but you will have to take one and a half times as much time in something called civil service, maybe, yeah. where you do some, some projects for the good of the country. So at the end of the day, somehow wow. you have to serve Switzerland. Yeah. And after the military service, you usually take the gun home. Technically, Switzerland has one of the highest gun ownership populations in the world. This all kind of... Okay, I know about the guns. Okay, something that I noticed in there, it said something like, 
exceptions, like women are exceptions. So is it like women don't have to serve like the men do, but they can volunteer? It said, but can volunteer. Is this just a, a man thing? Is this just a man thing? Or are women, um, you know, uh, required to do like the civil service as well? I'm just curious because I know that's how it used to be here in the U.S. I know that the men, you know, they were the ones that were required to go, you know, fight in the wars and things like that. And the women could stay home. The women couldn't vote, but they also didn't have to fight in the wars. And so I just I wonder if that's still a little bit how it is there um, or if if that's if I'm misunderstanding that. Anyway, kind of interesting, kind of a sensitive subject over here a little bit. But yeah, the, I'm, I'm curious. Do you guys know? It plays into their unique system of government. It's often said that Switzerland is in an eternal election campaign. So we vote three to four times a year. And we also vote uh, regional for people to get into the National Council. So it's kind of like Switzerland focuses more on policies rather than politicians, would you say? A little bit of both? A little bit of both. But it's like you're very involved in everything. Yes, we are involved. And if we don't like something, there will be a referendum. But in Switzerland, wow. it's relatively easy. Yeah. Some cantons uh, have different voting systems like uh, voting publicly by raising hand or some weird family sort. The head of state of Switzerland what? actually though is the federal <laughs> council. And one of them is the president, but it doesn't really matter because it changes every year and he's just one among equals. Fun fact, yeah. Switzerland can actually deny citizenship to anybody who wants to apply for it. In fact, in 2010, there was one lady who was denied because her neighbors said she was annoying. There's a lot of those stories, like somebody not knowing where the baker is in the village because she shops in a big store. No passport for you. In regards to religion, like most countries in Europe, most of the people will at least culturally identify with Christianity. And in Switzerland, the case is mostly with Catholicism or Protestantism. It used to be very important. My grandma told me uh, her parents would not have accepted her bringing home a Catholic. But nowadays, uh, we don't really care anymore. Now, okay, of course, awesome. this is one Good. source <laughs> that played a role in many of the regional differences throughout Switzerland. And they also kind of have like a healthy level of regional competition. And with that, let's move on to the sports part with art. So, sports in Switzerland go hand in hand, even on the corporate side. In fact, because the tax laws, many European and international sports federations hold their headquarters in Switzerland. Domestically though, Switzerland has some sports that they actually invented, <laughs> such as Schwengen, which is played in sawdust, and the contenders wear burlap shorts. There's also Hornison. And you have to grab the burlap shorts to like throw them down or something. <laughs> that looks... Looks interesting. <laughs> it's a team sport. It's kind of like a mix between golf and baseball. In any okay, case, sorry, with Hornison, it's a team Hornison. sport. It's kind of like a mix between golf and baseball. In any case, when you live in a country with big <laughs> snowy mountains, you're going to get an emphasis on, this is, I know, a total shocker, on winter sports. Skiing yeah, yeah. and mountaineering are pretty much taught from adolescence. Switzerland also invented competitive sledding. They invented the first bobsled oh, and bobsled track that makes in St. Moritz. Switzerland has done pretty well considering considering their size in both the Summer and Winter Olympics. Alpine skiing being their strongest event with 22 gold medals. On another note, auto racing was actually wow. banned in Switzerland. They had a huge crash in 1955 that stopped it all. But the government made a little loophole exception for electric racing. And finally, we cannot end this segment without <laughs> mentioning the most popular athlete. I know him, Roger Federer. He's part of the big three. 20 Grand Slam singles title winner, 103 ATP singles titles, two-time Olympic I think medalist. I recognize he him. has streets named after him, coins with his face. He's a model for Rolex and numerous <laughs> brands. There's a lot of babies out there named after him for I sure. Think I, recognize I once got a trophy him. for potato sack racing and it was a big deal. Like my mom was proud of me. And I do not know how to end my segment, so um <laughs> Thank you, Art. Yeah, the Swiss people have shown that even though they're a small country, they still can pack a punch with a competitive side. And we have this thing called Kantonligeist, where each canton really has their own rules and does their own thing. To explain a little bit more about the culture and how things kind of go out in that way for Switzerland, here's Random Hannah with Culture Stuff. <laughs> 
guys, I'm back. And remember, Hannah, yeah. you can get a random Hannah shirt at geographynow.com. The culture That's of funny. Switzerland <laughs> cannot be easily summarized as a nation. That's because it breaks down to each canton having its distinct identity. There are lots of stereotypes for them, but here are some that you guys told us. Argao is known for having bad drivers. Valais has the most incomprehensible accent, while Graubünden has the most beautiful one. Glarus doesn't exist. Zurich has a superiority complex, and what? Geneva is just the French version of Zurich. Appenzell is known for hippies and alternative medicine. Funny enough, Inner Appenzell didn't give women the right to vote until 1991, and the country has a whole until 1971. In fact, Switzerland is known for having many interesting laws. For example, if you live in an apartment, you are not allowed to make distracting noises after 10 p.m. You're not allowed to cut your- D Was there flushing? If you live in an apartment, you are not allowed- After 10 p.m., no f toilet flushing, laundry, showering. I would never shower if I- <laughs> Just kidding, I usually shower in the mornings, but seriously. I mean, parties, I guess, make sense, but toilet flushing? What are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to just kind of leave it there? Oh, I would not like that. That's interesting. How to make distracting noises after 10 p.m. You're not allowed huh. to cut your grass, hang your laundry, or do noisy chores on Sunday. The Swiss really seem to value oh. their silence. The Swiss are known for their many discoveries and inventions as well, such as cellophane and aluminum foil, Velcro, the vegetable peeler, the discovery of nucleic acid and DNA, and they were co-creators mm. of the World Wide Web. Notable contemporary icons nice. of Swiss culture include figures like Globi, Papa Moll, Shellen Orsley, and the most famous one worldwide hey! They are notable for the visual arts in every field. You can find it in everything like Basel, with its 13th century Romanesque architecture, to the early 20th century Dada movement. Even Helvetica font and its variants originated in Switzerland. Oh, that makes sense. The Helvetica font would be from the Confederation Helvetica. Never thought about that. <laughs> I've known about this font forever. It's one oh. of the preferred fonts that we use on Geography Now. Speaking yeah. of the arts, uh. one way to learn about Switzerland is through its films. And if you want to learn more about Switzerland's films, follow my channel, Filmography Now. Hannah has a spin it up. Oh, Hannah, cute. Hannah. In any case, <laughs> each canton in Switzerland has its own festivals and celebrations. You have everything from the Basler Fasnacht, where people in Basel <gasps> dress up in... <coughs> I almost just died. What the frick is that? Why is that like the scariest thing I've ever seen? Okay, I thought that the masks were scary in Portugal. No, this is this is another level. Our kids, I don't see any kids around. That's probably for a reason. Keep your kids inside. Sorry. Am I the only one that thinks that these are just like incredibly unnecessarily terrifying? Okay, wait, what is it called again? Festivals and celebrations. Help me. You have everything from the Basler Fasnacht, where people in Basel dress up in masks and throw confetti, to Umspunenfest, held every 12 years in the town of Interlaken, where men compete to throw massive boulders. There's too many festivals, awesome. you can't go through them all. Partially because we have to move on, which means you know what's coming next. The Florida man himself, Keith. We need another hurricane. The Florida man himself. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Keith here. So today I decided to wear my bathrobe because, you know, you got to live life comfortable. By the way, guys, you can buy a Keith shirt. Look at that design. I designed it myself. Okay, so you guys think you know Swiss music and all that stuff. You probably think of, you know, yodeling, cowbells. I do. That's a good start, but let's go a little further. Yeah. Many experts will agree that European alpine yodeling had its roots in Switzerland dating back to the early 1500s. The technique was used by herdsmen trying to call their livestock or communicating far distances between villages in the mountains. Many will say that the traditional yeah. national dance music of Switzerland, though, oh. is Lander. It uses a 3-4 time signature. Quarter note gets every single beat, whatever. This style was actually <laughs> adopted by many classical composers like Beethoven, uh, Schubert. Uh, they kind of just, you know, took it and ran with it. Okay, now let's fast forward a couple hundred years. Good they you know. actually hosted and won the very first Eurovision Song Contest. Fun fact, 30 years cool. later, they would actually win again, but with Celine Dion, even though she's Canadian. And for some reason, Tina Turner is a citizen. <laughs> it has nothing to do with banks and money. <laughs> anyway, there are tons of music festivals like Street Parade Fest, 
festivals, the Montreux Jazz Festival, which has had such artists as Pat Metheny, Steve Morse Band. I hope to go there at some point. Goal of mine. There's even a statue of Freddie Mercury as Queen recorded oh, many of their top hits that's in so the cool. studio over there. All right, we don't have time to talk about I the entire that. evolution of the 20th century and the 21st century of Swiss musicians and stuff like that. But however, cool. what I will say is that if you like heavy metals bands, you should check out Celtic Frost, which is a great metal band. I hope you enjoyed okay. my segment today. Stay Keith, everybody. Thank you, Keith. So something <laughs> important about Switzerland is how they interact with the rest of the world. Which brings us to the last segment, the friend zone. Oh! <laughs> He's like, I was gonna say that. <laughs> we have managed to actually dodge a bullet and stay neutral throughout the last century, which was a quite difficult thing to achieve. I mean, they're so neutral that even North Korea joined the UN before them. Although you guys did host the European... No, we'll host anything with you diplomacy. Wow. But Hosted! But we'll also pay for it, but we don't join. Here's how they played out their <laughs> diplomacy game. In respect to their constitution and overall global reputation, Switzerland's foreign policy is to traditionally avoid alliances and work for humanitarian efforts that strive for world peace and prosperity. This is partially why huh. they host more international organizations than any other country in the world, most heavily concentrated in Geneva. Nonetheless, with their intense history and background, there are some countries that Switzerland has to admit they have quite a closer link to, if at the very least culturally. No one likes to make fun of Germans more than the Swiss, but in reality these two are so heavily tied in, especially with the Baden-Württemberg state that borders Switzerland. The area around the town of Rottweil was part of the old Swiss confederacy that was lost during the Napoleonic Wars, and today the town has an agreement of friendship with Switzerland. Overall, <laughs> South Swabian Germans and German-speaking Swiss generally understand and get each other way better than, say, a Berliner German. In that regard, Austria has I just noticed this, but it kind of looks like Switzerland is, has a little kissy face. It's like, yeah, we're okay. We're friends. <laughs> anyway, has any, does anyone even think that, or is it just because they have eyeballs on it? Right. has traditionally been one of their biggest rivals in things like sports and outclassing each other with things like classical music, architecture, and general welfare. They both admire each other's systems of operation, and many Swiss will say that Austrians probably get them way better than the Germans. Otherwise, France pretty much has the oldest diplomatic exchange when they signed the Treaty of Perpetual Peace in 1516, and the first Swiss ambassador abroad was hosted in Paris in 1798. Today, France hosts more Swiss people in diaspora than any other country in the world at nearly a quarter million and they appreciate each other's, shall we say, bougie standards. On the other oh, hand, fair. Italians, mostly Lombards, have been rapidly moving into Switzerland, mostly in the Ticino canton, and are really taking advantage of that Italian-speaking official status. The Vatican City to this day still hires Swiss guards to stand at the palace, a tradition that has been going on since 1506, one of the oldest military units continuously in operation in the world. They still dress in traditional Renaissance uniforms and are actually trained in combat and small arms. It's not just for show. When it comes to their best Ooh. friends, though, um, what is up with it Italians just moving everywhere? I feel like in several, well, at least in the Italian video, they talked a lot about, or they talked about very intensely, I guess, the kind of migration of Italians to other countries. And then they, they're talking about this again. Why do Italians move out of Italy so often, like in such large groups? That's really interesting to me. Hmm. Most Swiss will tell you, oh, we're neutral. We can't say we have a best friend. But after you get them a little tipsy and ask them one more time, they might make a Freudian slip and say, little Liechtenstein. Switzerland yeah. and little Liechtenstein go hand in hand. <laughs> they are irrefutably inseparable. Liechtenstein is basically Switzerland's adorable little baby sibling about 200 years younger. They not only share currencies and speak almost the exact same German dialect, they have a customs union, open borders, and the same stance on armed neutrality, but Switzerland also agrees to protect them if anything happens, represent them in any international treaty negotiations or abroad if they are unable to, and even when Switzerland makes mistakes and does things like accidentally firing an artillery shell at a ski resort in 1968, or accidentally invades them because the soldiers couldn't read maps, Liechtenstein is just what? happy to see them and offers them drinks upon arrival. All right. They're like, it's fine, we're cool. Okay, I love how they're like, oh yeah, we don't have any alliances, but also, we're going to protect Licht Liechtenstein. Yeah, that's just... <laughs> we're not an alliance, but we got you. <laughs> that's, that's funny to me. I'm like, is that not kind of an alliance? <laughs> and in conclusion, Herman, take it away. You're the Swiss guy. I'm out. <laughs>
Switzerland is a beautiful country where it's really nice to live and enjoy a nice and peaceful life or have a nice vacation if you bring the necessary cash. <laughs> Well, yeah, thank you guys so reals. much. Thank you, Herman, for being in this video. It was okay. so fun filming with you. I can't believe I flew out here He's to so see sweet. you. Stay Aww. tuned. Syria is coming up next. Oh, fascinating. That was an extremely fun video. Oh, gosh, we've been talking and watching this video for 43 minutes now. All right. <laughs> well, I think that I said everything that I wanted to say throughout the video. Very interesting dynamic in Switzerland that I was not aware of. Very cool. Anyway, let me know what your thoughts are. Tell me what your favorite part of Switzerland is. So many fun things in there, except for the terrifying masks. I didn't like those. All right, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!